My fiancé cheated with the wedding planner's brother. Now I'm calling off the wedding, confronting the truth, and trying to move on. I, 37M, was about to be married to Brianna, 29F, today. I had proposed to her a month ago and she was elated about it. We have been seeing each other for almost two years now, and I felt it was time for us to exchange vows. You see, I'm more of a boring and introverted nerd, sort of. If you asked me to plan an event, I would most likely put together the most basic stuff and get done with it. So when she proposed to take the charge, I happily handed over my credit card to her. That was my contribution to our wedding. Brianna wanted to hire a wedding planner for the big day. She was involved in every basic detail of the event. I wanted the wedding to be in a month, but she said it would take Atiatl's three months to pull off the kind of wedding she wanted. I agreed to have it her way. I met the deal and the next time I met them, my world crashed. Brianna shortlisted two wedding planners for me to meet and finalize one. We finalized Mira, she was damn good at her business. That was it. I know. The preparation was going on. I got busy at work, trying to wrap up my work before the wedding. We had planned for a week-long honeymoon to Paris so before that I had to wind up my work. Brianna used to update me on the progress and I was cool with that. The planning was going on fine. Then one day Brianna told me that Mira met with an accident and fractured her knees. She was on cast for the next six weeks. In her absence, her stepbrother would be stepping in to take care of her work. A few days after this I asked Brianna if everything was going okay. And she said yes. Mira's brother was handling it well. Two weeks before our wedding, the venue we had earlier decided had to be cancelled due to sudden rain predicted on those dates. It was an outdoor location. So we had to switch to something indoor. They shortlisted the banquet hall of a five-star hotel. Brianna asked me to spare some time to visit the new venue and write a check to them. I took two hours off from my work, picked up Brianna, and drove to the location. Mira was there with her brother. She had recovered from her injuries but her brother was still handling the arrangements. We four were waiting for the manager in charge of the booking to arrive. Few minutes later, a middle-aged woman arrived. She introduced herself as the banquet hall manager and straight went to greet Brianna, saying you must be the bride. The glow of your face speaks for itself. Our friends were also saying that Brianna had been glowing ever since I proposed to her. While the wedding could be a reason, there were other factors too. Brianna turned pale on seeing that lady and was cutting her in between. After hugging Brianna, that lady greeted Mira's brother and said, You're a lucky man to have such a gorgeous woman as your fiancé. No wonder you were unable to take your hands off her. Brianna grinned and intervened. There must have been some misunderstanding. The lady trying to assure Brianna said, Oh, don't be embarrassed. You guys are so much in love and going to be married soon. I run this hotel. I see so many couples making out in the elevator every day. So, no big deal for me. Mira sensed the discomfort in the situation and pitched in, but it was too late. She said, Okay, we were here to discuss the final quotation of the venue. I stood up and left without saying a word. I couldn't sit there pretending nothing had happened. I understood what exactly had been going on there. Brianna ran behind me, trying to stop me. I closed the elevator on her face, rushed to the parking lot, and drove off. I could see her chasing my car in the basement. That 15 minute drive to work was the most difficult drive for me. My phone was constantly buzzing with her calls and voicemails. I reached the office but was really not in a condition to work. I requested in the reception not to forward any calls or meetings for that day and cancelled all the impending ones for the day. After like hundreds of missed calls from Brianna, I responded. It was all about, that's not how it sounded, there's a misunderstanding. That lady admitted that she might have mistaken me for someone else. She wants to apologize to you. Could you please come and meet her once again? I said I'm no fool here. She insisted that I meet that woman once again to clear the confusion. I hung up without saying anything. I didn't respond to her after that call. In the evening I got a call from Mira. She said she was sorry to interfere in our personal matter, but she also requested me to meet that woman and see for myself what she had to say. I said I don't know. I'm not in the right state of mind right now. After thinking a lot about it, I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt and meet that woman. I didn't tell Mira or Brianna about it. The next day I again went to the hotel and asked for that lady. I was escorted to her cabin and she apologized to me. She said she might have seen someone else and mistakenly took it for Brianna. I wasn't convinced by her reason. I mean she could be confused about one person but not both of them. She said, maybe I saw Brianna and that young man together during their site visit and next instance I saw some other couple making out and got confused. I asked her if she could show me the camera footage of the elevator on the day Brianna visited the venue. She suddenly turned pale and stammered her way to say that she couldn't. It was beyond her company's policy to show the camera footage to the outsiders. This security policy was understandable but her behavior was still suspicious to me. I asked her why she was explaining herself and why she needed to be so apologetic. She said she was worried about getting fired from her job if Mira complained of her big mouth behavior to the hotel owner. I mean the hotel lost its bookings due to her nosiness. I said look, I don't believe your reason at all but if you're worried about your job, I can assure you that it won't be affected. 
I called Mira right in front of that lady and told her I was canceling the booking for the venue and she shouldn't do anything to jeopardize that lady's job. Mira asked me if I had met that woman. I said yes and she has cleared the confusion from her end but I still want to call off the wedding and it has nothing to do with the hotel manager. Mira said okay and hung up. That woman thanked me for it. While I was leaving, she asked for my card. I gave it to her. Later in the evening I got a call from her and she told me that she had actually seen Brianna with that wedding manager guy and there was no confusion, she had agreed to lie to me to save her job. Brianna had begged her to lie and even softly threatened her that she would complain to the management about her nosy behavior. I asked her why she is speaking the truth now, she said I was kind to her, and she wanted me to know the truth because she had a broken house due to a cheating husband, so she understands the pain of betrayal. Fair enough, I didn't tell anyone about this, I'm not that social of a guy, my work keeps me busy. I have a close-knit bond with my siblings but I didn't tell them or my mom either. Meanwhile Brianna kept sending me cute texts and selfies. I'm yet to block her or even confront her about the truth. Though I understood the truth on the very first meeting with this lady, meeting her for the second time got me thinking about Brianna's cruelty. I mean how could she stoop so low to threaten that woman for her job and force her to lie? Now I wonder if I really know the woman I was supposed to be getting married today. Edit, I didn't go home on D-Day. I spent the night at my office. The next day I met that woman at the hotel and things became crystal clear. That evening I called Mira and asked her to come down to my office. When she was here I told her I wanted to terminate the contract. I was ready to pay whatever it was under their policy and some extra compensation for her loss, but she politely refused it. She charged me whatever was within the contract. She even gave me an extra refund out of empathy. But I think it's her guilt, because our life got screwed because of her low-life brother. She said she would initiate the exit formalities and mail me. It was sorted. Brianna was still texting me, asking me when would I come home, and all those loving and caring messages. She flipped when Mira sent the contract termination email. Brianna panic called me asking me to come home and talk this out like adults. I responded that she needs to vacate my house and there's nothing left to be talked about. She came down to my office but I asked my reception desk to not let her inside my cabin and tell her I was busy. I called and asked her to leave. I said I was not in a state to have an irrational conversation with her and that she should not bother me for some time. She vacated the house with her essentials but left the car. It was gifted by me on her last birthday. I've been holding myself strongly until now but today was supposed to be my wedding. Calls from friends and relatives are making it worse. I have switched off my phone from the morning. Update 1, spent the next week living in a cocoon, limiting my conversation only with my senior staff or work-related stuff. I asked my wedding planner to do me a favor and send the cancellation email to all the guests who were invited. That led to a flooding of calls and texts from pretty much everyone. My side of people were worried about me. Her family and friends were behind me for reconciliation. Brianna was still telling everyone that I had called off the wedding over some stupid misunderstanding. I let it be. After a week of sulking and brooding over my sorrows, I had to move my ass to work. I don't have the luxury of just moving out of the city and disappearing like others I read on this subreddit. I wish I had that luxury. Now I'm cursing myself for even trying to get into this love shit. Gladly I've been away from all these for so long. I should have been that way. My friends were right in saying I'm late for the wedding bells, it has to do with my family setup. My dad passed away when I was in college final year, leaving his manufacturing business to me. I have a sister and a younger brother. Sister was in freshman year when dad passed and my brother was still in high school so eminently everything came to me. Our business was not sort of a multinational level that could operate with the board and trustees without the owner's presence. It's a mid-sized manufacturing business where someone needs to actually run the show to survive. I was quick to jump into the boat and take it over. We had no other option. We had a house mortgage and a college education to fund my siblings and support my mom. She is not a working woman. I worked hard to learn the business and tried to scale it up. I was so worked up for all these years that my love life had been for a toss. I had a few flings here and there but nothing got serious, not even casual relationships. Mostly it was one night and casual sex. I met Brianna two years back at a common friends party. She was so bubbly and cheerful that I couldn't take my eyes off her. We started off a casual fling and didn't realize when I felt for her. She should get a lot of credit for putting up with my busy schedule. She had been patient and accommodating of my work commitments. That's why when she said she wanted a wedding of her choice, I readily agreed. She deserved to have a dream wedding, that's what I thought until now. I haven't told a lot of people the reason for our wedding fallout. Mom and siblings knew and for the rest of others they don't need to know. Brianna showed up at my mom's thinking she didn't know the truth, she requested mom to help us reconcile. Out of respect mom didn't spill the truth and said she would ask me to call her. I didn't want to but mom convinced me to have closure, it's necessary to even move on. All the hows, whys and whens need to be answered. I'm not sure if I really need closure or if I have moved on without that. I'll do it if I feel the need to have the answers. Edit 1 I have cancelled the honeymoon bookings we had for Paris. It was insurance covered so I got the refund pretty much except for the flight booking. I cancelled it last moment. Edit 2 People calling her a gold digger, please don't use that word. 
I don't want to put all sorts of labels on her, because she cheated. SBE cheated and I called off the wedding. That's it. I don't want to be disrespectful towards her unnecessarily. Update 2. Brianna showed up at my door last day. I knew she eventually would. If this was earlier I might have got a restraining order against her, but now I think my anger has subsided. The pain is still there but I think now I was ready to at least listen to her. I let her in. She wanted to hug me but I blocked her. Before she started speaking I said I know the truth so better not manipulate it. She went numb for some time and said I'm here to confess and went on to say that cheating was never intended but it just happened. One thing led to another. When Mira injured her knee, I was terrified about the whole arrangement and also kind of annoyed. Her brother Aaron AP took over her work and I kind of got more involved to make everything seamless. For the first two to three times I didn't even notice him that closely. Our conversation was very transactional. Only when we went for the wedding dress trial and the way he meticulously selected everything for me to match my taste and elegance, did I notice him. He was just being extra nice and sweet to me. I'm sorry, I know I screwed up. I kind of fell for his flirtatious comments about my beauty and features. Unknowingly I was seeking validation from him. It was so flattering I couldn't resist myself. She broke down bawling out her lungs. I asked her when they crossed the limits. She asked if I really wanted to know all the details. I said yes, she said. When we went to visit the hotel venue, Aaron picked me up. I was floored by his chivalry. In the car he was trying to touch me, but I didn't reciprocate it but we eventually made out in the elevator. That's when that manager saw us. Coincidentally, she saw us again when we were leaving the hotel. We were making out again. I asked her if it was just that. She stammered, no, then we booked a room in the same hotel and had it two to three times. It suffocated me so badly that I had to get up and take a tour to the front porch to gasp some air. Was that all? She said yes, and then on the next day, that lady at the hotel spilled out the truth. Brianna was also choking because of heavy breathing. I realized her guilt was giving her tough times. She looked pathetic. She kept crying and apologizing. I couldn't hold back my tears. She held my arms and asked if there was the slightest chance of getting back together. I said no. She let AP sleep with her because he complimented her generously. It was such a cheap deal for her. I cannot trust someone so shallow. I mean if her reason is that his flattering compliments lured her into his pants, then there could be so many areas where I faltered and others are good at that. I'm busy at work, I'm not that romantic kind of person, I'm introverted, and not very good at giving compliments. This means every time she meets a guy who has these qualities which I don't, she would cheat. She said I was indirectly calling her a whore. I said I'm not putting any label on her but speaking the facts. She has never cheated on me for all these years, and she had never found me incompetent and said my love was just enough for her. I wish it was but it's not. I don't want to live in a constant feeling of insecurity and incompetence that she might meet someone better and fuck everything again. There were several rounds of breakdowns, crying and apologizing for hours. I realized it was not working. It was getting worse for both of us, especially me. I was getting weak and falling for her tears. So I showed my backbone and stood up to leave and told her I had packed and kept her remaining stuff in the garage. She didn't say anything and kept sobbing. I came back after an hour and she was gone. I checked the garage. She had taken her stuff. I feel lighter after that. Indeed, closure helped in my case. I didn't think I needed it but glad I listened to my mom and gave it a shot. Update 3, this is mostly going to be my last update, might delete the account later. Updating here has helped me clear my head and move on. Thanks to everyone who made me feel I'm not alone in this. I have unblocked Brianna but have also made it clear that we are not going to be together. She understands that now and doesn't bother me. She also confessed the truth to her parents who then called me to apologize. After I cancelled the wedding, they were literally threatening to hunt me down. After knowing the truth, they were sorry about that. I said it was fine and understandable. I have no harsh feelings for them. Now that my anger has subsided, I feel I too have a role to play in this cheating. I need to work on expressing my feelings and letting my loved ones know how much I love them. Communication has been my problem. I love my family and would give my legs and arms for them but rarely have I told them that I love them. Same for Brianna. I loved her more than anything else but was not generous in expressing that feeling. She's the prettiest woman I have seen yet, I didn't tell her this enough. I'm not justifying her cheating at all, neither I'm planning any reconciliation but I feel this to be my incompetence. I've scheduled an appointment with the therapist and looking forward to working on this aspect of my personality. I don't wish for any serious relationship now, not least in the near future. Heartbreak is hard, it's damn hard. Thanks for reading this and engaging on my post. Appreciate all the comments, good and bad, now on to the next story. Story 2. Wife and I planned to learn French together in France. After saving for years and moving there, I discovered she was cheating on me with a classmate. My wife and I used to be best friends before we married. We both met in college but we became close friends about three years after we left college. My wife was going through a very tough season when our friendship started. She had recently lost her father to cancer, and around the same time, she caught her best friend with her fiancé. Can't explain how we got so close, but I remember we started talking one day and never stopped. For two years we were best friends and told each other stuff. I was always happy to have her around because I loved her aura. 
she was always so energetic, and her laughter was heart-melting. Aside from this, my wife and I were very much alike. We had similar passions, loved the same sports, and had similar hobbies. It was almost like we were born to be with each other. As time passed, I realized I had fallen in love with my wife, so I boldly asked her out, and she said yes. We ended up dating for 10 months, and we married. Being married to my wife was fun initially because we were always eager to explore and try new things together. She has a very open mind and would jump on any idea I had. We didn't have any kids yet, but we made a solid plan to have kids after three years. While my wife worked as a secretary in a big pet store, I was a mechanic and worked in a car brand company. We were both actively planning for our future and a particular vision from when we dated. While we were dating, my wife and I agreed to learn at least three different languages before we grew old, and the first language on our list was French. We could have simply downloaded a language app, learned on YouTube, or taken an online language class. But my wife insisted that we travel to France to learn the language, feel the culture, and be in a class where a native French speaker would teach us. It sounded like a great idea, and since we loved to explore, we started saving towards it. For two years, we put money aside every month for our France trip, and when we believed it was enough, we made our trip. It was our first time being in France, so you could imagine we were like children who had been to Disneyland for the first time. We loved everything we saw, and being around people who spoke French constantly motivated us to be serious about learning the language. We started classes the same week since we had already checked out the school we wanted to enroll in before traveling to France. We were in a class of about 15 people who also wanted to learn the language, and it was so much fun. Our class was only meant to be for three months. My wife believed three months of learning directly from a French native would help us learn the basics of the language and speak it, and she was right. Living in an environment of majorly French speakers helped too. For the three months we lived in France, we had so much fun and enjoyed our stay there. We also had the opportunity to relate and mix up with other people and made a my wife was a very social butterfly and she made friends like it was nothing. She even had more friends in our class than I did and I didn't mind. I knew it was her personality and trying to find more people to practice the language with. Well, I was wrong. My wife had been involved with something way higher than trying to practice the language with her new friends. Towards the end of our class, it was mandatory for everyone to take an examination and we had successfully entered that phase. One day while my wife and I were in our short lit apartment preparing for our exams that afternoon, her phone buzzed. She had left her phone on one of her textbooks and went into the room to sort out what she'd wear later. When I looked at her phone screen, I saw that the message was written in French, and I was impressed that my wife had reached the extent of getting messages in French. So to test my French reading skills, I read the message to see if I could understand it, and that worked to a level. I couldn't understand the whole message because they were words that confused me. Meanwhile, I had understood something in the message that looked suspicious, so to be sure of what I had read, I used a language translator and was perplexed at what I read. Through translating the messages into English, I discovered that my wife was having an affair with one of our classmates. He had been her seat partner a couple of times, and they got along well. Not just that, they were also planning to cheat in the exam and also cheat on me afterward. By that I mean sleep together. I was so mad, and I felt betrayed. I could not even believe that my wife was having an affair with someone she barely knew for three months and she chose to destroy our marriage and the memories and sabotage every plan we made for our future after I got a grip on myself. I snapped the message with my phone, and immediately after I did that, my wife walked into the living room. I tried to control my emotions like most men said they did on this channel, but I couldn't. It was eating me up inside, and before I knew it, I confronted her and yelled at her. She tried to lie that there was nothing going on between them and that maybe I had misinterpreted the message, so I showed her the English translation, and she kept quiet. After staying silent for a few minutes, she said she could explain and was only trying to explore and have fun. I nearly exploded when she said that, but I had to stay calm and walk out of her dot immediately I left the house. I went straight to our school, and I showed the text message to the person I knew was in charge. When the text message reached the right people, all the previous exams my wife and her affair partner had written were automatically cancelled, and since we had a couple more papers left before I returned to our country, I had to stay with one of the new male friends I made there till I wrote my last paper. After my last paper, I returned home before my wife. I avoided her the whole time we were in France, and I didn't take any of her calls or listen to the numerous voicemails she sent. When she returned home, she had met all her things on the front porch. Even at that, she still tried to beg me, and she claimed she and her app had not done anything serious except kisses. At that point, I didn't care if they had done anything serious. Her intentions were all that mattered. We eventually divorced, but before we went our separate ways, my results came out, and I aced it. As for my wife and her affair partner, they were told they could retake the class if they wanted, but that would be at the expense of another fee. She couldn't take another class because it took us two years to collaboratively gather that money and pay for our accommodation. It still hurts when I remember how we were so in love with each other, our plans and the kind of life we were building, but it's all for the best.
For me, being single is better than being with a woman who jumps on any man she gets close to. I know I have moved on, but it will take a long time to trust a woman or date one. 